When it comes to the animal kingdom, cats are amazing parents. So, when a cat adopted a tiger cub, it did a fantastic job. But several years later, something happened that absolutely no one expected. Arthur was a man who loved camping. He would often travel from his home in a Russian city up to the nearby mountains, where he would set up camp and spend several days in the wilderness. Camping was not only a fun activity for him, but it also provided an opportunity to relax and unwind from his busy job in the city. Spending time alone in his tent, with nothing and no one around, was Arthur's idea of heaven. You see, Arthur worked in finance, and most of his workdays were spent making frantic phone calls, chasing up people for money, making investments, depositing cash, checking stocks and shares, and generally being run off his feet. It was a high-pressure, fast-paced environment, and Arthur couldn't deny that he loved it. But being able to escape to the silence of the wilderness was the perfect way for him to leave all that stress and pressure behind, at least for a little while. But one day, while on one of his camping trips, something very out of the ordinary happened. Something that changed the course of Arthur's life forever. What was it? Keep reading to find out the incredible, almost unbelievable answer. While sitting outside his tent, stoking the small fire he had made and reading a book while drinking coffee from his flask, Arthur heard a noise. It was a sort of whining, high-pitched moaning noise. Arthur had spent a lot of time in these mountains and had never heard a sound like that before. Naturally, he was curious and interested in where it was coming from and what it might be. Setting down his flask and book, Arthur cautiously headed off in the direction of the sound. It was tricky to pinpoint the origin of the noise, as the trees were dampening the sounds and the boundaries were reflecting them, making them bounce from all different directions. But eventually, Arthur rounded a corner and saw something that made his mouth drop wide open. There, laid on the ground in front of him, were two tiny tiger cubs. They were no more than a few weeks old and looked terribly helpless and defenseless. Being a cat lover, Arthur's first thought was to scoop them up and take them somewhere safe. But he knew they must have a mother somewhere. Perhaps she had gone to bring some food, or maybe she was nearby, keeping a sharp eye on Arthur. Whatever the case, Arthur left the cubs where they were, though he kept returning to check on them throughout the rest of his camping trip. However, what became very evident was that no one was coming for the cubs. There was no mother, and the cubs were truly helpless. When Arthur noticed how painfully thin they were, he knew he had to take action. So, he packed up his camping gear and scooped up the two mewing tiger cubs. He would take them home and try to care for them himself. Upon arriving home, Arthur walked in to find his cat, Princess, ready to greet him. Princess was a beautiful cat who had given birth to several litters of kittens before. Arthur loved Princess with all his heart, and being able to sit with her in the evenings and stroke her was another one of those things that helped him decompress after his long and busy days. But when Princess saw the two tiger cubs, she was immediately curious. She looked from the cubs to Arthur, as if to ask what they were, where they came from, and why they were there. Arthur had no time for introductions, though. He knew he had to get some food into the cubs as soon as possible if they had any chance of surviving. Princess watched as Arthur fed the mewing cubs several slices of meat and let them lap up an entire bowl of milk. That's when Princess did something truly astonishing. She walked over to the cubs and started grooming them with her tongue. Despite the cubs being the same size as Princess, she knew they were youngsters and needed looking after. It was as if Princess's mothering instinct had been activated, and she fell into the role as if she did this kind of thing every single day. Over the next few weeks, the tiger cubs grew stronger and healthier. Their weight returned, and they began to have more energy. Princess would look after them, and the cubs would follow her around as if they just accepted their new roles as Princess's kittens. She would groom them, encourage them to eat and drink, and run and play with them. And before long, all three animals would curl up together and fall asleep. As time went by, the tigers began to grow physically. They became longer, taller, and heavier than Princess, 
yet she still treated them as if they were her own little baby kittens. When they would become a little too rough during play fights, Princess would intervene and lay down the law, sending the tiger cubs scattering in different directions. It was truly an amazing sight, and it never failed to make Arthur laugh when he watched his tiny little cat dominate the two giant tigers. Sadly, the day came when the tigers were too big to live with Arthur anymore. They were becoming a handful and often caused damage in the house, albeit unintentionally. Things were getting broken and smashed. Moreover, feeding them was costing Arthur a fortune. So, he made the difficult decision to take them to the local zoo and ask them to care for the tigers from then on. Strangely, as he packed them into the back of his car, Arthur felt a great sadness, especially when he saw the sorrowful look on Princess's face as they drove away. Fortunately, the zoo was happy to accept the tigers. They had recently created a wonderful, large compound where the tigers could run and play in an environment similar to their natural habitat. There was even a large perspex window for visitors to watch them as they played. After saying his goodbyes, Arthur left the tigers in the capable hands of the zoo staff. He had done all that he could. However, he vowed never to return to the zoo, fearing he would feel an intense amount of guilt for leaving the cubs behind. For several years, he stuck to that vow. But years later, something unexpected happened. Princess became sick. She was getting old, and her body was no longer able to fight off illnesses as it once did. Arthur took her to the vet, who advised that it would be best to euthanize her. Sadly, Arthur agreed. However, there was one thing he wanted to do before saying goodbye. He wanted to give Princess one final treat. Arthur headed to the zoo, unsure of what he would find there. He placed Princess in a carry cage and carried her through the gates, heading to the tiger compound. There, he immediately recognized the two tigers he had saved many years before. The tigers saw Arthur, the man they had once known, and looked at him through the perspex window. Uncertain if they remembered him, he put his hand up to the window as if to stroke them. The tigers looked at Arthur's hand and then turned away, as if he was as much of a stranger to them as the countless other people who came to see them every day. Arthur believed they must not have remembered him and lowered his hand as they walked away. But something incredible was about to happen, something that no one could believe. Arthur then picked up his cat, princess, and showed her to the tigers. Immediately, the two tigers lit up, bounded over to the cat, and started affectionately pawing at the glass and rolling around on the floor. They clearly remembered the animal that had raised and protected them all those years ago, and Princess obviously recognized them too. Arthur didn't know how this was possible, as the tigers had grown so much since they parted. But Princess knew that these two giant beasts were her children. It must have been the scent or some other animal instinct that we will never truly understand. Princess rubbed her small body against the window and meowed at the tigers, and in return, they tried to rub up against their mother too. It was a very emotional meeting, one that melted the hearts of all who witnessed it. While Arthur was unsure if the tigers would remember anything of their upbringing or the time before they came to the zoo, it was evident to all that they clearly remembered and still had a lot of love and affection for their mother, Princess. This tale reminds us that love knows no boundaries, even between different species. It shows that a good deed will stay in the memories of all for a long time. And for that brief moment, everything was alright with the world. Now it's over to you. What did you think of this incredible and touching tale? Have you ever heard of a cat being so loving towards tiger cubs and raising them as its own? As always, we love to hear from you, so be sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. They threw the old donkey into the wolf cage and sentenced him to death. What happened next was unbelievable. In Albania, donkeys are traditionally used for various humble jobs. They are usually used for the transportation of guns and people, especially in mountainous areas where vehicles are not practical. While the practice may have been significantly reduced in most areas, it is still rampant in rural areas. Most of these donkeys suffer from abuse and unremitting labor. Perico is such a donkey. In this case, he is seriously overworked. 
He is owned by a group of farmers in a small Albanian village called Patak, where the main source of income for most people remains agriculture. The village is located halfway up the mountain, and donkeys are more suitable for transportation in hilly areas than bicycles or trolleys. The grey donkey was bought from a local breeder at an early age and has worked tirelessly ever since. He was trained to pull carts and carry goods for villagers. At first, Perico found the job difficult and tiring. He had to pull a heavy trolley full of vegetables and goods, and sometimes the road was steep and rocky. But as time went on, the industrious animal grew stronger and more skilled, and he began to take pride in his work. His daily routine is the same. It began when his master called him when the first ray of sunshine began to pass through the trees. Then they would prepare a day's work for him, and he would get a small amount of food before they set out. The donkey's owner will load his cart with all kinds of goods, from bags of flour to boxes of fresh produce. Perico is a strong donkey, and he can carry the weight without complaining. When the car is loaded, the donkey and one of his owners will begin their journey through the country. They would snake through fields, forests and hilly trails, stopping at farms and markets along the way to deliver goods. As time goes by, Perico will feel tired, but he never complains. He knows that his work is very important, and he is proud of being able to help. So, he will force himself to move on, even if his legs are sore and his stomach coos with hunger. Perico spent most of the day pulling trolleys and weights up and down the rugged terrain, just taking a break to drink water. He doesn't get tired easily and works hard. Earlier in the day, after pulling the cart, he worked in his master's field at night. Whenever night falls and stars appear, Perico returns to his comfortable stable. After a hard day's work, he would lie on his straw bed. His eyes are heavy with fatigue, and he will slowly enter a quiet sleep. Then, he will wake up early the next day and continue his daily work. Although Perico worked as hard as he could, his breeder didn't appreciate him and sadly didn't know when to stop. As time went on, his rest time became shorter and shorter, until he had almost no time to rest. His master was slow to feed him, and sometimes did not trim his hooves. Donkey has lived at home for more than 20 years, and years of hard work soon made him physically exhausted. Naturally, as he grew older, he became weaker and weaker, and could no longer work as hard as before. As the years went by, Perico began to slow down. His joints are not as flexible as before, and he finds himself tired more easily than before. But even so, the donkey never lost his enthusiasm for life. He continued to work hard, enjoying the simple pleasures of country life, such as drinking a cup of cool water on a hot summer day or covering himself with a warm blanket on a cold winter night. But his body doesn't compare with his positive attitude. One day, when the donkey was pulling the cart up the mountain, he was so weak that he was crushed by the weight of the cart and fell to the ground. His master urged him to get up, and Perico tried his best because he didn't like his master to be angry with him. But he couldn't stand up anymore. The donkey did not move, angry and disappointed. The master took the donkey home and put him in his corral. One of them called the local vet who came to examine the donkey. The doctor arrived and treated the donkey, but just before he left, he reminded them of the donkey's age and advised them to greatly reduce his workload. Perico's owners were frustrated when they received the news, but they followed the doctor's advice. Donkeys don't go out to work anymore. They gave him food and water every day and left him in the corral. The wolf howled and pushed the cage, but the cage did not move, and no one came to save it. After trying every means to get away without success, the wolf had to turn to his fate. Frustrated and tired, the workers took turns feeding him and watching him every day. He became their source of entertainment. They would feed him and howl so he would howl back. Wolves don't like being played by people and roar at them. He just wants to go home. After being locked up for about four days, the poor animal became tame, and it just stared at the people in frustration. Whenever they came to make fun of him, he would roar at them. Perico, on the other hand, remained unharmed in his corral. 
the donkey had enough time to regain his strength and even looked better than ever. His master, however, was not pleased with the development. They didn't like him to eat without working, and let him work in the field several times. One day, one of them came up with a terrible idea. He suggested that they keep the donkey in the wolf's cage and see what happens. Unexpectedly, they all agreed. One of them brings Perico to his side, pushes him towards wolves together, and then closes the door again. What happened next was completely unexpected. When Perico's owners returned, they saw a very ugly scene. Instead of fighting, the two animals snuggled up to each other. Soon, the wolf and the donkey became best friends. The two animals formed an indissoluble bond because of their common experiences, and found comfort in each other. These people can't believe what they see. They want animals to fight with each other or something else, especially because they are sworn enemies in the wild. They don't think these animals will make friends. The unlikely friendship spread through the village, and many felt sorry for the animals. Soon, a large number of people signed the petition and submitted letters to the Albanian government. Due to the public outcry, the government ordered these people to release the captive wolves back into the wild. Perico was sad to see him leave, but he also had a happy ending. He was taken to a new home, where he didn't have to work and could be taken good care of. He was also relocated to a green pasture with plenty of food and water at all times. The wolf often comes to greet his friends, and they will spend happy and happy hours together. They are still friends and live happily in their newly gained freedom.